Alright. Let's first talk about AMA. You can learn more about it from its official website ubackup.com. We can go down to the bottommost part of the landing page, under the About section, let's go to Company. From here you will see what the company is all about. It is basically one of the leading companies that produces data security through backup, cloning and data recovery software. AMA was established in 2010. It has become a very big company now with 50 million clients all over 180 countries around the world. They have four major products. The AMA Backupper which is the software we will cover for this video. It is used to backup your data, clone a system or disk, and sync your backup and live data. They also produce AMA Cyber Backup, which is a tool for doing a backup for enterprise databases like SQL and such. They have Phone Tool, which is a backup tool for iPhones. Then My Recover Software which is a recovery tool for deleted or corrupted disks or memory cards. Unfortunately, I cannot find any information from this about page about other company information, like what country AMA originated, who founded it, or where its headquarters are. So I turned to ChatGPT for help. According to ChatGPT, AMA was founded last 2009 in Chengdu, China. It seems to be talking about the same AMA since it lists the same products. Although some products here might be old ones like AMA PXE Boot Tool, which was not mentioned from their official site. Also according to ChatGPT, the CEO and founder of AMA is a guy named Mr. Yan Zhu. When I search in Google though, this is what it gave me. From this site called Crunchbase, it says that the founder is a guy named Jack May, which honestly makes more sense, since the company name is AMA. The name may be in common among them. Founding year was the same with ChatGPT though at 2009. Well the U Backup Office AMA site says 2010. Also, according to this, the AMA headquarters is located at Minnesota, USA. Another inconsistency here is, the official website listed here is amatech.com. A totally different site. But if you explore this amatech.com site, it talks about the same company being presented in ubackup.com, same set of products and everything. To add to the confusion, when I asked ChatGPT about AMA's headquarters, it told me that it is located at Chengdu, China. ubackup.com is the official site given to me by the AMA representative, so that one is for sure. So I tried to ping the site, and then used an online site to check the location of the IP address. And surprise. It gave me another location. San Francisco, California, USA. Anyway, my personal take, and these are just guesses, so don't quote me on this, I think AMA really originated from China, maybe Hong Kong, and there probably were acquisitions or merging with other companies that happened along the way, which lead to headquarter and official website changes. For now, the only information that I am 100% sure about is that AMA's official site is ubackup.com. Okay. Enough with the company's investigation and let's get on to the topic. I've mentioned the four products that AMA has earlier, but this video is only focusing on one of them, and that is the AMA Backupper. This is a tool for Microsoft Windows where you can backup or clone files, folders, a partition, a system, and even the whole disk. Here is the pricing of the licensed packages of the AMA Backupper. You can see the pricing of the Pro version here, which is intended for personal use. Then we also have the wider enterprise scope for the servers, as well as for workstations. Below we can also expand to see the comparison between the packages listed above. As you can see, the Pro is only for a Windows PC use, as I've said, for personal level only. While the other packages are for business use, with a higher price, more features included of course. Above, in the top bar menu, you can also browse for the details for each of the AMA's products. Under the Windows Backup menu, you can see the AMA Backupper, and good news. They do have a free version of it. Below this page, we also have the comparison of the free version with the Pro and the workstation paid versions. As you can see, the standard edition is a legitimate freeware, and it does support Windows 7 up to Windows 11, just like the free version. For cloud backup, you only have a 15-day trial, which is fine if you're not really into cloud anyway. You can't also do a backup on optical disks, has a limited backup scheme, differential backup options, and all the other items listed here, which, if you ask me, is that big of a deal anyway, if you are just looking for a free backup and clone tool. I also forgot to mention that the execution speed is also slower on free version, as compared to pro versions. Pro is 40 USD, while workstation is 50, but in this video, we will just focus on the free of course. To get the free version, let's click on the download freeware button here. The X-File installer is 127 megabytes in size. Let's open it to install. It's pretty much the usual installation process. After selecting the language, you will be given a choice to try the Pro version, or choose the free standard version. Just click the skip button if you want to install the free one. Then just check the acceptance to license agreement, and click install now. The installation took about one and a half minute to finish, and it will open this web page once done. 
Let's close that, as well as the installation window. As you can see, an AMA backupper icon has automatically been created in my desktop. Let's open it. We got some ads here for a sale of the Pro version. Here is the UI of the AMA backupper. It is a really simple and user-friendly user interface. At the title bar, you have an option to log into your AMA account, check notifications and check out some sales of their products. The hamburger menu here will give you more options, like the settings. From here you can enable or disable notifications. In the backup mode, you can set the default between Intelligent Sector or Exact Backup. Intelligent Sector is recommended so I'll leave it as is. You also have two choices for backup service, either Microsoft VSS or AMA service. I'll just leave it to default Microsoft as well. In the advanced section, you can select the compression level of your backup. You can also set the splitting settings. You can customize this in case you have limitations on backup space, you can set the size of each split file of your backup. You have many other options here below which you can explore on your time. There are more items in the drop-down menu here that you can check out as well. In case you want to lean more about specific functions of the app, you can expand the help menu and click on tutorials. This will open a website which neatly itemize all the functions that you can perform on AMA Backupper. Check it out. We also have the very organized side tabs items here, which by default, has the home selected. Home will show new Backupper sync, but once you have a backup file, that will be shown here instead. In the backup tab you have a lot of options. You can do a system backup. It will show all the partitions that contain system information. My system has three partitions for system, OS and recovery. And below you can select where the backup will be saved, which can either be a local drive, your hard disk or attached external storage devices like a USB drive. Or you can also select a network drive or a shared folder within the network. I'll show you some backup examples later in the video. Next option is the disk backup. From here you will need to add and select the disk that you want to backup. It will of course list all the available disk from your PC, including the external drives currently plugged in. And you also have the same options here on where to save the disk backup. The partition backup is basically the same as disk backup, but for this one, you will need to select just the partitions from the disks that you want to backup. Just click the partition to select or unselect them. The one highlighted in green are obviously the one selected for backup. And also the same options for the backup storage destination. The file backup is a bit different since here, you will need to select either a folder or files that you want to backup. And the destination for the backup for this one includes an option for cloud drive, in case you own a cloud storage other than the AMA cloud. Cloud backup is basically the same as the file backup, but the destination is fixed to AOMI cloud. Again, AOMI cloud is only available to pro version and up. This free version only has 15 day trial for AMA cloud. And the last one here is the Outlook Backup which, as indicated in the orange Pro icon here, is only available for a Pro version. And of course, if you try this, you should have Outlook set up in your machine. Then we have the Sync tab which gives you options for syncing your backup with your live data. Unfortunately, in free version we can only do the basic sync. As you can see, the real-time, mirror and two-way sync all has the orange Pro icon indicator, which means they are only available for Pro version, which is the same indicator in the Outlook Backup, as I've shown earlier. In the Restore tab, you basically just see all your backups here and select them to restore. For Clone, we have three options, for cloning the whole system, which is a really helpful tool, if you want to move your main bootable device to another disk or SSD. Then we also have option to clone a whole disk, or just a partition of that disk. Unfortunately again, the system clone is only available for Pro. But I believe the disk clone will also do the trick as system clone, you just need a higher disk space, since it will clone the whole disk. I'll show a demo of that later as well. And the last tab is the tools. You have 10 more functions that you can do here like creating a bootable media, disk wipe, and more. Just be conscious of the items with the orange pro icon, as they are not available to free version. Alright. Time to get our hand dirty. Let's do an actual file backup. Let's select that. As mentioned earlier, you can select either a folder or files. I actually have set up a sample folder here for the testing located in the desktop, so let me select that. Let's open the actual folder here in the desktop, just to show you the contents of the folder that we are going to backup. Here we go. We have three files here with a total of 687 kilobytes. Let's remember that when we do a restore later. Okay. Let's select the folder now. Now for the destination, you can select either a cloud drive, a shared folder or a local path. I'll select a local path for this example. I have USB flash drive plugged into my laptop now, and I'll select that. Then I'll select the backup folder that I have here, and use that as my backup location. We have more options here for the backup. You can add comments for the backup. 
For pro version you can also add encryption to the backup for more security. You can also add a pre and post command script to the backup. I honestly can't think of a use case for this, but it's available if you need it. And the advanced options are basically the same set of options that I've shown in the settings earlier. The settings are the default values, and you can customize those in this section, specific to the current backup you are doing. You also have an option here for scheduled backup, in case you are still doing some changes in the files, or you want the backup to happen on a specific time or day. You can select the duration, or have it run through event trigger, or when you plug in a USB. You have more settings here for the schedule, and other options on what to do after the backup. A really nice and comprehensive options here. You also have options here for the backup scheme. You can select either a full backup, incremental, or differential backup method. Incremental backup only includes the data that has changed since the previous backup, while a differential backup contains all of the data that has changed since the last full backup. I assume everyone knows what full backup is. Below, also just for pro version, we have options on backup cleanup, where you can set the number of previous backups that you want to keep, which is a nice way to preserve storage space. Let's click the start backup button to begin the process. This 687 kilobytes data took 15 seconds to backup. Of course, with the paid pro version, this process will be much faster. We now have our backup file here at home. When you hover your mouse in this backup image, it will give you an option to do another backup of the same files, and a burger menu which gives you all the options that you can do with it, like doing another backup, restoring it, schedule another backup, and more. Let us simulate a data loss here by moving the files we have backed up to another location. Let me create a new folder here and then move the whole folder that we backed up into that. Now let's restore the backup. You can do it here in the burger menu, as I've shown earlier. Or you can also go to the restore tab and select a task. All the task you've previously done will appear here, and select that or your restore image. Or you can also select an image file. If you remember, we saved our backup to drive H, inside the triple Z backup folder. We now have a folder for my file backup here. Inside that we can see the backup image that AMA Backupper has created. You can select that and restore it. But for me, the simplest place to restore is just at home, open the burger menu of the image, then click restore. This will then give you a list of the files you have backed up, impressively including that whole path location of the files. As you can see here, it totally saved the desktop location as well. And from here, you can select individual files to restore, or select the folder to restore the whole thing. I'll select everything for this demo. Let's click next. Now you can select the destination of the files you want to restore. You can restore it to its original location, which is a really nice, attention to detail option. Or you can restore it to any other location from your local driver network shared folders. I'll select original location for now, which is the desktop. Let's restore. OK. Restore is a lot faster which took only 3 seconds. And there we go. The files are back to my desktop. Let's open it to check if everything is here. We have all the 3 files here, and they are 687 kilobytes. Perfect. To be upfront to you, I don't have enough resources to demo a clone. I don't have an extra SSD, nor an external hard drive for this. So I will be borrowing some parts of Fazertech's video for this. I am posting Fazertech's YouTube channel URL in the screen right now. Feel free to visit it, subscribe, and support his channel as well. In this clone demo, we are cloning Drive C into Drive D. The idea here is to switch the main bootable device from Drive C, and make Drive D to be the main bootable device of the machine. The current drive CSSD is too small with only 64 gigs, so the plan is to upgrade it with a 256 gigs SSD. Let's go to clone tab. System clone will also work for this, but since disk clone is the one available for free, we will choose that. We will then choose drive C as our source disk. Then click next. Now we are selecting the destination disk, which is drive D. After clicking next, we will receive this confirmation message, which explains that the destination disk, which is drive D, will be totally erased as we are doing a clone disk here. Click OK to continue. If your destination disk is an SSD, which is the case here, make sure to check the SSD alignment option below. Also note that if your destination disk is larger than the source disk, the destination disk will be partitioned as the same as the source disk, and you need to resize and format the excess storage space manually. However, in Pro version, you can click the Edit Partitions option, and then tick the Add Unused Space to All Partitions, so that the excess storage space will automatically be formatted and usable in the destination source. When you're good with the settings, click Start Clone button. If there are files opened or being used from the destination disk, you will receive this message. Just click Yes to automatically close all those files and proceed with the cloning process, which will take a while especially if you are cloning a big disk. 
Once done, you can restart your PC, then go to the BIOS menu. Under the boot section, you can now edit the boot option 1 to select Drive D as your main bootable device. In this example, Drive D is the 256GB disk. Then save your BIOS changes, and now when you proceed to Windows boot up, you are now booting through Drive D. With the help of AMA Backupper, you are now able to upgrade the small capacity SSD with the bigger 256 gigs SSD, and everything was so easy and seamless. Alright. As a last part of this video, I will be showing you how you can upgrade from standard to pro version of the AMA Backupper. I also want to mention that this video was requested by AMA themselves, and they are kind enough to provide me with a code to upgrade to pro version. In case you also decided to invest for a pro version of AMA Backupper, all you need to do is go to the burger menu, then click on register. Then enter your pro version code in the text box, and click the register button. There we go. Registration successful. I am now on a pro. Let's check in the about menu. Here we go. AMA Backupper Professional Edition 7.2.0. Great. If you look at the items now, you can see that there's no more orange pro icons, like this one for Outlook Backup. In the sync section, three of these used to have that pro icon, they're all gone now, which means everything is enabled and can be used now. As I've mentioned earlier, this video is basically sponsored by AMA, but they have no involvement whatsoever on the creation and content of this video. They are also viewing this video for the first time just like you. That being said, I am really impressed with AMA Backupper. The UI is very simple, intuitive and user-friendly. I can't imagine having any simpler UI than this for a backup and clone tool. They've also given a lot of thought on features that they have put into the software. I mean, having an option for compression levels, splitting of backup files, having literally all levels of the type of backup you want to do, from a file, to folder, to system, to partition, to the whole disk, and also having all the possible option for the destination of the backup image. From local drives, to external drives, network drives, up to cloud, restoring a backup to its original location, and more. AMA Backupper is a really complete, well thought of, and easy to use backup and clone solution for everyone. And I'm not saying this because they gave me a license, I just really like the tool. Even if I use only the standard free version, I'll be happy with it. The pro version license is just a bonus. Speaking of a pro version and a bonus, AMA promised me two lifetime AMA Backupper licenses, and I already got the first one and used it. When I received the second one, I will create another video and put that pro license for grabs. So watch out for that next video if you want to win the AMA Backupper Pro license. Make sure you are subscribed to the Ribby Trivia channel so you won't miss it. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Nobody air.